We reviewed the GPD WinMax 2 2023 Ryzen 7 7840U a couple of months ago. And we now have the Ryzen 5 7640U in our hands to take a look at. We will be finding out what the differences are and how the performance compares to its Ryzen 7 brother. Inside the box you can find the GPD WinMax 2 2023 Ryzen 5 model which we will show in more detail shortly. There is an envelope with the user manual inside which is in English and Chinese languages. And below that is a 100 watts charger. We will include the correct adapter for your country. And last but not least is a USB Type-C charge cable. Unlike our pre-production Ryzen 7 model we reviewed, this Ryzen 5 model is the same model you should receive when ordering. Visually, the Ryzen 7 and 5 models are identical. When closed, it measures 8.9 by 6.2 by 0.9 inches and weighs 1,005 grams. On the back are the left and right shoulder and trigger buttons for gaming with. There is a 3.5mm headphone port for audio, and new to the 2023 models is the Oculink port, which we will show later with the G1 eGPU docking station. Beside those are the HDMI port for output to a TV or monitor, and there are two USB Type-C ports, one USB 4 and the other 3.2 Generation 2. The left side features both a full size and micro SD card reader slot and on the right side are two USB 3.2 generation 1 ports. The Maxu 2023 opens up to reveal the massive 10.1 inch touchscreen display. It has a maximum resolution of 2560 by 1600 but is set to 1920 by 1200 by default. It is a great screen for gaming, media and working on. On the hinge is a 2 megapixel camera. It's good for online meetings and chatting with friends for example. There are two metal plates that can be removed and stored in the back of the Max 2. Between the controls is a touchpad. I personally found it okay for general use, but you can sometimes hit a keyboard key by accident. Talking about the keyboard, it is a low profile keyboard that is backlit. I wrote all of this review using it and ran into no issues. The Ryzen 5 model features the 7640U processor, which has 6 cores and 12 threads running up to 4.9GHz. The Ryzen 7 has 8 cores and 16 threads. It uses the AMD Radeon 760M graphics, which has 8 cores, compared with Ryzen 7's 780M with 12 cores. This will of course mean lower overall performance with the Ryzen 5 model, but how much of a difference will there be? The Ryzen 5 model comes with 16 gigs of LPDDR5X RAM running at 6400 MHz, though it may be possible to increase this up to 7500 MHz depending on stability. You have a choice of 1 or 2 terabytes of high speed PCIe NVMe SSD. In our temperature, fan noise and battery test, we are running Street Fighter 6 on a loop to get the required measurements. We got a highest temperature of 62 degrees and 62 decibels of fan noise under full load. The battery lasted just over 2 hours, which is a nice improvement on the 1 hour 45 on the Ryzen 7 model. And whilst idle on the desktop, it managed just under 9 hours, a little longer than the Ryzen 7 model. The fewer cores and threads probably help here. We rolled back the drivers to the original provided by GBD, as at the time of making this review, AMD's official drivers are totally useless. They were fine for use with the G1 eGPU docking station, but for internal graphics usage, we saw performance decreases across all of our benchmarks. For the GBD G1 benchmarks, we are using the latest official drivers, as they were more stable and not affected by the internal GPU issues. AMD have since removed support for the 7000 series and for good reason, so once these drivers are fixed we will recheck the internal graphics benchmarks. Across the three benchmarks we see around an 11% difference in performance comparing the Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 5 models. The Ryzen 5 falls in the range of the older generation 6800U performance. With the GPD G1 eGPU dock, we get very good increases in performance for both USB and Oculink, 
It does trail behind the Ryzen 7 model as expected, but overall these are decent scores. We see a higher difference in performance on the Forza Horizon 5 benchmarks running on the very low graphics settings. We see around an 18% performance difference, the extra cores and threads makes a big difference in this game. And with the GPD G1 we again see some nice improvements across Oculink and USB connections. 99 frames per second at 4K is very good, giving you some options for higher quality visuals. We are running Shadow of the Tomb Raider on the lowest graphics settings. We see around an average of 90% performance differences between the two models. They are still decent scores, around that of the 6800U processors. With the GBD G1 we see great performance on Oculink, nearly hitting 100 FPS on 4K. Again, there's plenty of extra frames per second for higher quality visuals even at 4K. On Cyberpunk 2077 we are running on the lowest graphics settings. We get around a 6% difference in performance between the two models, which is a lot closer. The GPD G1 performance is overall very good, with above 60 FPS at 1440p and below. It does struggle at 4K with a high of 40 FPS. 1440p is still very good though, so there's plenty of scope for higher quality visuals. Our last benchmark is Street Fighter 6, running on the highest graphics settings to really push the handheld. Both devices struggle at these high settings and we can see the Ryzen 5 barely makes it past 30 frames per second. With the GPD G1 we get 60 frames per second at 1440p and below. At 4K we do see some decent results, but not above 60 frames so you probably would want to lower the graphics a bit. The GPD WinMax 2 2023 Ryzen 5 sees anything from 6% up to 20% performance difference to the higher performing Ryzen 7 model. It is worth remembering that we were benchmarking with the RAM at 6400MHz, which is what it is shipped with. You will get a performance bump if your handheld does run stable at 7500. We can also blame some of the performance differences on the drivers. I am very sure that we will see improvements in performance as soon as AMD releases a properly working driver update. As to how much performance, that is the question. The 7840 and 7640U are essentially a more power efficient 6800U CPU. They are higher performing, but I think there is still room for a bit more. So is there any reason to buy the Ryzen 5 model over the Ryzen 7? There is firstly the cost. The Ryzen 5 16 gig with 1TB storage is around 27% less in price than the lowest spec Ryzen 7 which has 32 gigs and 2TB storage. That is quite a saving. If you are on a budget then the Ryzen 5 is definitely worth considering. When combined with the GPD G1 eGPU docking station we saw comparable performance. We have not yet released the benchmark results as we were waiting for working AMD drivers to test everything again, but for games where the CPU demand is low and GPU demand is high, the Ryzen 5 definitely gives the Ryzen 7 a run for its money. Overall, the GPD WinMax 2 2023 models are excellent for all round usage, not just for gaming. The high performance, large display, usable keyboard and much more, while still remaining very portable, are the highlights of these handhelds. They are, however, a little let down by poor AMD driver support, but keep in mind so was the 6800U drivers when they were first released. They improved over time and we do expect the same for the 7000 series. Both models are perfectly usable right now and are definitely worth considering. However, if you are not patient and want the best performance right away, you may want to wait for some decent drivers. You can learn more about the GPD WinMax 2 2023 Ryzen 7 and 5 models from us at droix.co.uk and droix.net for international shipping. Use the discount code WINMAX25OFF for a 5% discount. The code will be valid for one month and cannot be used with other codes or during store sales. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and like so you can keep up to date with our latest videos. See you in the next one.